deepest grave Drowning in the monotone, no escape today But I need a hip call to break the static's hold Losing of this time, it bites the score is told Headlines made of gold Twist and shake perspectives in a way so bold They serve it up a humor with a snarky twist Little bites and moves to fill your daily list Hey guys, it's your Newsy News Nuggets for this afternoon of July 29th And we have some scary and sad news that is breaking right now Give me one second Sadly, it looks like two little girls have been unalived and nine are injured in a mass stabbing at a Taylor Swift dance party in Southport, UK. Uh, this looks just terrible. I hope that um, the other little girls who did not pass away can be saved, but this is breaking news, you guys. Two young girls were killed and at least nine others were injured when a hooded, knife-wielding teenager rampaged through a Taylor Swift-themed dance workshop in the UK Monday morning, police said. The horror unfolded shortly before noon in Southport, just outside Liverpool, when an unidentified 17-year-old attacked the children before he was taken into police custody. Hours later, Merseyside Police Chief Constable Serena Kennedy confirmed that two children had passed away and nine others were injured, including six left fighting for their lives, along with two adults left in critical condition from being stabbed as they bravely tried to protect those children. And absolutely, you parents that tried to help those children are, are heroes to me, no doubt about it absolutely standing up and putting your bodies in harm for little children will always make you a hero uh, to me. Quote, it's like a scene from a horror movie, local merchant Colin Perry told the BBC. They're coming here now and screaming. It's like something from America, not like sunny Southport. A 17-year-old male was arrested, Merseyside police said, stressing that it is, quote, not being currently treated as a terror-related incident. Now, I will say that um, the fact that they just name him as a male and we don't get any other describing things is a bit sus and generally follows a pattern of this, this suspect does not uh, push a very good narrative or things like that. Prime Minister Keir Starmer called it a horrendous and deeply shocking event. Witnesses said the attacker wore a black hood when he entered the heart space, which had advertised a morning of Taylor Swift-themed th Swift yoga, dance, and break slit making. You know, and, and that's sad that now as a parent, you have to think about these things, you know, I don't send my kids out to big group things unless I'm there because I will pay attention to my surrounding. So, you know, I will keep my head on a swivel. I don't trust the people that are workshopping, not because I don't think they would do that just to be protective, but they have thing, they have their eyes on something else. They're, you know, leading yoga and dance. So I generally watch, you know, and keep an eye on weird people because I watch way too much news. Uh, and hopefully um, these kids can get the healing and help that they need. At least 25 children from the ages 6 to 11 were at the event when the carnage unfolded, with the knife men reportedly pulling up in a taxi, witnesses said. The victims were rushed to three local children's hospitals where they were being treated after the attack. The wounded victims were taken to Adler Hay Children's Hospital, Antri University Hospital, and South Pork and Formby Hospital. Their conditions are not immediately available. One witness reported a heart-wrenching scene outside the venue following the attack. I saw seven to 10 kids outside the nursery. Bear Barth Barthon, who owns a nearby shop, told the mail, they were injured and bleeding. They were in the road running from the nursery, Barthon said. They'd been stabbed here, here, everywhere. He indicated his neck, back, and chest. A HeartSpace employee described the chaos. When I got there, there was a guy who was an absolute distraught in a mess. He said, I'd seen two people children run out of the heart space and they thought 
uh, he thought they got hit by a car because the car was just full of blood at the side of the car. But actually, that was the children who had been stabbed and fallen into the car, Staffer said. One parent told the male his daughter was at the event. My daughter was in it and she was traumatized, he said. She ran away and she is saved. So I expect that we will be seeing more information slowly drip out about this. Uh, England has just had a new prime minister. Kara Sarma is with the labor movement or the labor party. So uh, this will be the first time, and I believe, now don't quote me on this, but almost 14 years that a labor uh, government is in charge. So I don't know what the response to this will be from the home office, but I hope that there is a strong, uh, you know, problem or a strong, you know, look at what happened here and stopping it. In legal news, well, uh, a jury says that baby formula caused a serious illness in premature infant and awards the mother a whopping $495 million in damages. Now that number will probably be adjusted. Uh, generally, they don't let, they adjust the number down a bit or make it a little proportional. A jury in Missouri awarded a mother nearly half a billion dollars after concluding that baby formula her daughter drank while in the hospital led to serious injuries. The jury ordered Abbott Laboratories to pay Margot Gill $95 million in compensatory damages and $400 million in punitive damages, court records say. The jury voted 9-3 in favor of Gill, according to the lawsuit. Gill gave birth to her daughter, identified in court documents as R.D. prematurely on August 26, 2021, at SM, SSM St. Mary Hospital in St. Louis. Shortly after her birth, or the birth, the doctors transferred the girls to Cardinal Glenn Children's Hospital. Staff began feeding the infant Simulac baby formula, which Abbott produces. Gill's lawyers claim the girl developed necrotizing endercolitis, NEC, inflammation of the intestine leading to bacterial infection that is common among premature babies after ingesting Abbott's products. The doctors had to perform extensive surgery after her diagnosis per the lawsuit. Gill's daughter uh, could have avoided catching the disease had staff fed her human-based bread milk breast milk, the lawsuit said, citing several studies and the recommendation of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Gill suffered, quote, significant emotional distress, loss of income, and or harm, the lawsuit said. Her life has been significantly affected by RD's injuries, lawyers wrote. The lawsuit claims that Abbott was negligent, intentionally misrepresented its product, and is liable for Gill's daughter's injuries. But in a statement, Abbott's spokesperson Scott Stolf said the company strongly disagrees with the verdict. Quote, there is no scientific evidence showing that Abbott's preterm infant products cause or contribute to NEC. He said specialized formulas and fortifiers like the one in this case are part of the standard care by the medical community and along with the mother's milk or donor human milk are the only available options to feed premature infants. The American Academy of Pediatrics also released a statement saying the causes of NEC are, quote, multifaceted and not fully understood. Lawsuits like this may jeopardize the availability of cow milk-based formulas because there's often not enough donated human milk if the mother is unable to produce significant qualities, uh, they wrote. Feeding decisions should be made by clinicians and families, said Dr. Benjamin Hoffman, president of the AAP, or AAP. These need to be individualized with the context of human milk availability, patient-specific uh, needs, and individual family preferences. Hoffman said rather than lawsuits, there needs to be public policy that expands access to pasteurized human donor milk and supports government and private private financial support for donor milk banks. Formula is used as an essential source of nutrition, he said. Meanwhile, more than 300,000 infants are born prematurely every year, and we must take steps to protect the supply of infant formula for those who need it. So, um, you know, I don't know if, I didn't follow this case, you guys, 
So I don't know what evidence the jury saw that made them give this number. Now, I would think I would have a hard time being unbiased and I would probably loudly declare that if there was a child involved in a case. I think that child involved cases would be my kryptonite and I don't know that I would be able to be unbiased. And I think, you know, I could, I'm honest enough with myself to know that. So I doubt that I would be on the jury for this because I think that uh, deep down and honestly, I would have sided with the mother almost immediately and I wouldn't be able to judge all the facts. So I do want to see what they actually found that could correlate to the necrotizing, you know, endocolitis. I wanted to see that general correlation because this is a formula that's used in other hospitals. So this does worry me if, you know, they found a correlative, you know, issue and it's still being used. Now, if this was more of a, it could be this or could be that, then I, I, I sort of understand that. But I will just be real honest with you guys. I doubt that I would be a good juror for this case. In our final news, well, sometimes karma will bite you in the behind, so be a better person. Look, being a big, the bigger person hurts sometimes. It's not fun, but you don't get instant karma checks like this guy. A judo competition. Uh, Competitor refused to shake Israeli athlete's hand and yells Allah Akbar at the Paris Olympics, then gets instant karma. Well, you know, sometimes it happens. A judo competitor from Tajikistan refused to shake his Israeli competitor's hand after beating him at the 2024 Paris Olympics and then was subjected to immediate karma when he was beaten and left in tears the next match. Israeli judoka Barush Shmolov uh, won his first match in the men's under 45 pound weight class against Morocco's Aberdeen Tamin Boshita, uh, who declined to shake his hand. Then he faced Tajikistan's uh, Nural Imoli in round 18, or sorry, 16, according to the Times of Israel. Shmolov lost 117 to Imoli who was also left on the mat, who also left the mat without shaking the Israeli athlete's hand, according to Ynet News. Social media users are also claiming that the Tajikistan athlete yelled Allah Akbar as Shmolev after the match. The Israeli athlete was eliminated from the competition in Paris with the loss, according to Ynet. Imolviev went on to compete against Japan's Hifume Abe, who appeared to leave him on tears on the mat with an apparent arm injury. Oh, well, if you're a dingus, there's always going to be someone bigger, stronger, and jerkier than you. So try not to be an ass because you're going to end up on the mat crying like a little girl. And it says, Karma strikes Naruli Amolie uh, from Tajikistan who refused to shake hands with Israeli judo competitor uh, and, you know, did all shenanigans. He ended up with a dislocated shoulder and crying on the mat. Now, that is not to say that Mo would not cry if she got a dislocated shoulder, because she definitely would. But Mo tries not to be an absolute jerk face to everyone. Uh, Abe went on to win gold on the next match. Photos and video of the match were shared on X and showed Emale in tears on the mat after he was injured. The 2024 games have kicked off Saturday with fanfare and what some took as a religious, well, blasphemy, uh, you know, for drag queens present the Last Supper. But what are you going to do? It is 2024. The French decided to compete in the crazy shenanigans and pissed everyone off. Anywho, those are your newsy news nuggets for this afternoon. If you'd like more newsy news, the absurd, the weird, the sad, the sometimes heartbreaking, but most of the time heart 
filling news. Please come to Mornings with Mo at 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, every morning on a weekday, and then Nightly Newsy News at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, where we do, you know, the news of the night. Nothing political, nothing shenanigany, just the weird news I find and get, bring to you guys with fun, wit, wigs, snark, and heart. Do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, share with your friends. These have been your afternoon newsy news nuggets. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys tonight for nightly newsy news. Goodbye, everyone.